This video will assess the outcome of a potential conflict between Poland and Belarus, one a leading NATO member state and the other Russia's leading military ally in Europe. Although both were formerly in the Warsaw Pact alliance, the two have represented completely opposite political trends since then, with Poland strongly westernizing economically and socially since the Cold War, while Belarus has maintained a largely Soviet-style system. It will be assumed for the purposes of this assessment that the war will be waged in isolation, with neither receiving any support from NATO or Russia. Looking to aerial warfare capabilities, although both have similarly sized fighter fleets, that of Belarus is considerably more modern. The backbone of the Belarusian Air Force is comprised of 38 MiG-29C medium-weight fighters. These have been enhanced with modern electronic warfare systems, missiles and avionics. Their R-77 and R-27 missiles are some of the most capable Russian designs available. Although the MiGs are highly capable in air-to-air -air combat, they have a negligible air-to-ground capability and a relatively short range, meaning they are best suited to protecting Belarusian airspace itself. Providing a more elite and versatile capability, Belarus also deploys a dozen Su-30SM heavyweight fighters which integrate some of Russia's latest electronics, avionics, sensor and weapons technologies. The fighters have excellent flight performances and very long ranges, meaning they are ideally suited to offensive operations against Polish targets. The Su-30 is by far the most modern and capable fighter on either side, as well as the heaviest. Belarus also deploys 21 Su-27 heavyweight fighters in reserve. Although these have not been recently modernized, they still deploy more powerful sensors than anything in the Polish fleet and can be highly formidable when operating as defensive interceptors. The fighters also benefit from a long range and the ability to employ precision-guided weapons, making them potentially effective strike platforms. Su-27 and Su-30SM are both based on the same flanker airframe, but there is a technological gap between them of almost 30 years. The Su-30's major advantages include access to higher-end weapons for both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground roles, more powerful engines, a high-composite airframe, and entirely new avionics and sensors. Looking to Poland, the country relies on much lighter aircraft for its own fleet, deploying 48 F-16C Fighting Falcons equipped with modern AIM-120C air-to-air -air missiles. The F-16 is Poland's only fighter upgraded to a modern standard and equipped with viable missiles for either air-to-air -air or air-to-ground roles. The AIM-120C has comparable capabilities to Belarus's R-77, but has a slightly shorter range and carries a smaller warhead. The F-16 is the cheapest class of Western fighter offered for export, and its flight performance leaves much to be desired relative to Belarusian jets. Poland also deploys 27 MiG-29A fighters. Polish MiG-29s were built as downgraded export variants from the outset and have seen few improvements made since. As a result, their missiles and electronic warfare systems are today considered obsolete. Poor relations with Russia have seriously limited the possibility of upgrading the aircraft and have made it difficult to obtain spare parts. Poland also deploys 18 Su-22 dedicated strike fighters, which have no air-to-air -air capabilities but are well suited to ground attack. A major drawback with these aircraft, however, is that they deploy no standoff missiles whatsoever, meaning the munitions they use are all obsolete short-range designs. This factor alone seriously restricts their potential applicability in the case of a major war. Comparing Poland's top fighter with those in Belarusian service, it's clear that the NATO member state faces significant disadvantages. The MiG-29C outperforms the F-16C across the spectrum in air-to-air -air combat, from speed, altitude and maneuverability to situational awareness and engagement range. The F-16's only significant advantage is its superior air-to-ground capability, as it is less specialized in air-to-air -air combat. The MiG-29's superior weaponry and flight performance are likely to prove decisive in any potential engagement. The F-16's disadvantage becomes even more pronounced and overwhelming when comparing it to the Su-30SM. The Su-30 has over twice the engine power and is from an entirely different weight range which the F-16 was never designed to be able to tackle. The SM variant is also much newer than the F-16C. The Su-30 can carry twice as many air-to-air -air missiles and its radar is around twice as powerful. Any engagements between the two fighter classes can thus be expected to be extremely one-sided. 
The discrepancy in capabilities between Belarus and Poland is even greater when looking at ground-based air defense systems, with Belarus's air defense network arguably being the most capable in Europe. At the very high end, Belarus deploys the S-400 long-range system, widely considered the most capable of its kind in the world. The S-400 sensor suite is extremely powerful and it can engage enemy aircraft up to 400 kilometers away and fire on up to 80 targets simultaneously. Given the small size of the Polish Air Force and its lack of high-performance aircraft, the S-400 can easily be relied on to keep the skies clear of Polish jets. Belarus also deploys at least five units of the S-300PS system, which can effectively complement the S-400 and pose a serious threat to Polish fighters. Both systems are highly mobile, provide a flexible multi-layered defense, and make use of advanced cold launch systems. Other more modern systems in the Belarusian arsenal include the Buck, MB-3K, and the short-range TOR and OSA systems, all of which are highly mobile and can engage both aircraft and cruise missiles. It is no exaggeration to say that Belarus's air defense network has more than enough missiles to neutralize Poland's entire air fleet in a single salvo. It will pose the greatest challenge to the Polish Air Force's operations. Poland's air defense network still relies on systems purchased from the Soviet Union during the Cold War, none of which are mobile, versatile, or particularly advanced. For long-range engagements, it deploys the S-200 system, which has a very formidable range and is well suited to neutralizing targets such as transports and support aircraft. For short-range engagements, it deploys the S-125 system. These systems are potentially formidable, but their lack of mobility and aging electronics means they will be vulnerable to coordinated attacks by higher-end jets such as the Su-30SM. Belarus deploys advanced anti-radiation missiles which are capable of striking at speeds far too high for Polish defenses to intercept them, which combined with the low mobility of Polish defense systems will leave them very vulnerable. While Belarus has a very significant advantage in the air, on the ground the balance of power is far more even. Looking to personnel, Belarus has a much smaller standing army, but its use of reservist conscripts helps to largely compensate for this and provide a numerical advantage. Belarus's large paramilitary forces are likely to be relegated to territorial defense, but its large and very well-trained special forces are optimized for air assault operations and are likely to spearhead strikes into Polish territory or launch operations behind enemy lines. Poland notably has much fewer and less outstanding special forces and much weaker artillery, but it does have the advantage of more transport helicopters and APCs, meaning it will be able to redeploy its forces more quickly if needed. Looking to armor, this is one field where Poland does retain a major advantage with much larger tank units. Although the Leopard 2 has performed poorly in combat in recent years in Syria and Iraq, it's still potentially formidable and can outperform the T-72B1, which makes up most Belarusian tank units. Belarus's elite units, comprised of T-72B3 tanks with much more modern armor and sensors, are likely to be able to go head-to-head -head with the Leopard, but are still slightly outnumbered. Poland also deploys large numbers of aging T-72A and PL-91 tanks, which though inferior to Belarusian tanks, have strength from their numbers. Belarus notably has the advantage of deploying Su-25 flying tank aircraft for close air support, which can potentially be a major benefit on the battlefield. Poland has no close support aircraft at all. Looking to strike capabilities, which are likely to prove most decisive in a potential conflict, Belarus retains a very clear advantage. The Belarusian Air Force's primary strike platform is the Su-30SM, which is both the heaviest and most modern aircraft that will operate in the theater. The fighter's range and powerful sensors will allow it to launch precision strikes on targets across Polish territory. The fighters can deploy KH-58 missiles, which have a very long 250km range, a large warhead and a very high Mach 3.6 speed, allowing them to comfortably evade Polish air defenses. With each Su-30 able to carry 6 to 8 of the missiles, a fleet of 12 can devastate military bases across Poland in a single sortie. Belarusian forces are also thought to deploy the KH-31 missile, which has very similar capabilities. The KH-31 is lighter and better optimized to neutralizing air defenses due to its anti-radiation feature. Belarus's MiG-29s are notably poorly suited to a ground attack role, and will thus most likely be relegated exclusively to taking out Polish aircraft and escorting friendly ones. The Su-27s have a slightly better air-to-ground capability, although still poorer than their air-to-air -air one, 
and should air superiority be secured, they can make use of their very high endurances to strike deep into Polish territory. Another very formidable asset Belarusian forces will be able to depend on is a sizable arsenal of ballistic missiles. Belarus is the largest operator of the Scud B and Toczka short range missiles, which can be used to bombard military facilities such as airfields and troop concentrations but could also be used as a strategic weapon against Polish population centers. Both SCUD and Toczka missiles are deployed for mobile launch vehicles, meaning they will not only be hard to destroy, but can also accompany ground forces should they press into Polish territory. Poland's lack of modern air defenses will again prove a major weakness when Belarusian missiles are deployed, placing targets across much of its territory, including its capital Warsaw in the firing line. Polish strike capabilities are much more limited. The MiG-29A jets it deploys have no modern air-to-ground capabilities. Poland's Su-22 strike fighters can deploy very short-ranged KH-29 and KH-25 missiles, albeit much older variants than those used by Belarus, which date back to the Soviet era. The Su-22 lacks any air-to-air -air capabilities, so they can be pressed exclusively into a strike role. Poland's newer F-16 fighters deploy a small number of AGM-158 JASM cruise missiles which have a respectable 370km range and carry large warheads. Polish strike capabilities are thoroughly underwhelming compared to those of Belarus, a disadvantage which is exacerbated by the massive discrepancy in air defences. Belarusian defences are not only more numerous but are also several decades ahead in sophistication. This combined with Poland's lack of supersonic air-to-ground missiles, let alone missiles with a Mach 3 or more speed, means Belarusian air defenses can intercept the bulk of Polish attacks. The conflict's early stages are likely to see both countries attempt to take out enemy air bases and other key facilities with long-range strikes, for this control of the skies will be key. Polish F-16s will have to contend not only with superior Belarusian air power, but also with an air defense network which is technologically several decades ahead. F-16s are not expected to get many hits on Belarusian targets, due to both Belarusian control of the skies and the ability of platforms such as the S-400 and Tor M2 to easily intercept subsonic cruise missile attacks. Belarusian Su-30 fighters using extremely fast cruise missiles will be able to quickly neutralize both Polish air defenses and its air bases. This will ensure an advantage for Belarus for the remainder of the conflict. With control of the air and a very large ballistic missile arsenal, Belarus will be able to lay down massive fire on Polish bases and troop concentrations. This can be used to support a push into the country by the army while paramilitary forces handle territorial defense, and to take out key infrastructure and government buildings while pushing for a surrender. Poland will find itself under fire from both the ground and from the air and will have very limited means to retaliate or to intercept attacks. Belarus's frontline units and its special forces in particular will be more than capable of pushing into Poland with control of the skies and ballistic missile support both ensured. Ultimately, the result of a conflict will be a Belarusian victory, with its control of the air and strike capabilities being key advantages.